Howdy friends, welcome back to the Outpost. In today's video, I'm gonna show you an age old method of how to keep foods refrigerated without electricity. Now up to a few years ago, I really didn't do a lot of thinking about emergency prepping. Being from East Central Florida, the only thing we really had to prepare for was hurricanes and getting all the water you needed, boarding up your windows, make sure you had generator and gas. But now for the past three years, living full time in my RV, things have changed. My mindset is different when it comes to being prepared for these things such as losing electricity for long periods of time. There's a lot of proven methods out there these days and how you can keep food from going bad without electricity and stuff like that. Say you live in an old home that's got a root cellar in it, that helps a whole lot. Of course, if you're ready and you have a generator and you have gas and stuff, you can end up running that long enough until electricity comes on. What if we don't have any of that kind of stuff and we have to rely just on what we have around the house? Today, I wanna to show you a method called the Zier Pot. Let's go around back, get set up, and I'll show you how it works. Now, what I have today is two clay pots. One's a 10 inch and one is a 12 inch. Now, if you wanna make these bigger, that's fine, but always have to be one size over in order to this work because these are going to be stacked together. So we're gonna start by taking and covering up that drain hole at the bottom with whatever works. So you got a cork or something, or in this case, we're just gonna use some simple tape. Our next step is we're gonna to wanna to find an area on the property that is in the shade for the most part all day and has some sort of elevation. In this case, we're underneath a group of trees and I've got a cinder block and this is where we're gonna set up our zero pot. Take the larger of our two clay pots. We're gonna set it right down there so it's nice and sturdy. It doesn't go anywhere. But now that we have our larger clay pot that is elevated and it's in a shady area, we wanna take our smaller one and set it down inside of there. As you can see, <clears throat> nice and careful, don't break them. One's lower than the other. So before we do anything else, we're gonna take this back out. We're gonna add some sand to the bottom of the big pot. So this gets elevated to the point where these things are about the same height. All right, taking our smaller pot, we're gonna nest it down on top of that sand. Kind of get it set nice where it needs to be and kind of even it out so we've got the same amount of space all the way around between the two pots. Something like that. We want to make sure that we're pretty much almost even along the two top edges and stuff. And like I said, you can put something else over that hole or you can elevate it with something else. But sand seems to be the way I like to do this. You just make sure it's set in one place real good. And here's what's next. I'm gonna take a glass pot lid and I'm gonna flip it over and set it right on top of that smaller pot. And we're gonna go around these edges in the big pot and we're gonna fill this full of sand. And I wanna make sure to get all that sand down in there if you have to get a little butter knife or whatever and push it down. The reason why we have a little bit upside down right now is to try to reduce the amount of sand that's going to fall down in that inside pot. We don't want sand on the inside, we want it on the outside. Just have to work it until you get it so it's level at the top of the clay pot. And there, just like that, our entire outside perimeter of our outer pot is filled full of sand. I packed it in as much as I possibly could. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a temperature sample of the outside air in the shade in the sun as well as inside of this pot. All right I have a temperature gun and we're going to take the temperature here out in the middle of the sun. All right so our temperature in the sun read 133 degrees. Wow that's hot. Now let's take the temperature just here in the basic relative shade. Okay temperature in the shade 76 degrees. Wow that's like a difference of almost 60 degrees in temperature. Now for our temperature inside our zero pot. 82 degrees. So inside the pot is actually about six degrees warmer than it is in the general shade. Our next step we're going to be taking a two liter bottle of water and where we pack that sand around the inside pot 
we're going to pour water over that sand until it's completely saturated. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create an open circuit evaporating coolant system. So I'm not an HVAC, I'm a plumber, but I do know that a refrigerator works off of a closed evaporated system of uh, trying to draw the heat outwards. Uh, this is an open evaporated system, so that water goes down around the sand, and as the air passes through and evaporates that water up through the bottom of that sand, it creates a cool surface. All right, so we're gonna let that zero pot sit for a little while and allow that evaporation process to happen. And we'll come back and check on it a bit and let's see what the temperature is at that point. All right, about 30 minutes has gone by since we set our zero pot into place and put water in there. We've allowed some evaporation to happen and stuff. Remember the starting temperature inside of that clay pot when we started was 82 degrees. Let's take a look now. I am reading right about 72, 71 degrees. Yeah, that little zero pot really works. In a matter of 30 minutes, the temperature inside that dropped 11 degrees. Wow. I'm definitely impressed and so should you. Believe it or not, there's civilizations still to this day that depend on this method to keep their food from going bad. Now, a couple quick disclaimers on this method of cooling food. A, if you live in an area where it is high humidity all the time, it's probably not gonna end up working for you, as well as if you set that zero pot out in the middle of the sun, it's not gonna happen. Well, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. The zero pot an age-old method all the way back to biblical times and people still use it to this day to help keep food from going bad now we live in a sped up society that we all rely on certain things and there's much more easier ways of going about keeping food from going bad like having an ice box or if the power goes off even for a few hours just keep the refrigerator closed and such but it's nice to know a little bit of history about how people kept their food from going bad even to this very day got any comments questions leave them down below and i'll see you the next time on the outpost